Welcome to A Game of Ice and Fire, a video series devoted to a Song of Ice and Fire war game by Cool Mini or Not. We cover all aspects of the hobby with tactics and list build videos, painting tutorials of varying levels, and battle reports. So you might be awaiting those Baratheons that are around the corner, or you might just have some red plastic mountains men on the shelf, and you're asking yourself how I'm going to paint yellow. It's such a pain in the butt color to do, I hate it. So I'm going to try and lead you through how to paint yellow without making it look all gloppy and translucent. And now, a caveat for this one, the video is going to get a little wonky in some points because I just got a new camera and this video is more so to test it out, but I figured since I had finished it and painting yellow is a more tough thing to do, that it would be beneficial to put the video up. So I've decided to start with the Baratheon Master Warden, and we're just going to do the shield and the cloak, and to get that base coat started, we're going to put about uh, four, like probably two to one uh, Averlin Sunset mixed with the Burnt Umber ink from FW. Uh, you can probably supplement with any other like brownish green that you've got. What we want to do here is just kind of create a dark yellow base coat, and you could, one of the ways people tackle this is by uh, starting out with like a snake bite leather brown. The It's a color from Vallejo, so it's more of like a yellowy brown. But what I'm doing with, well, the reason why I'm picking up the, the Citadel Averland Sunset is that I believe that the Citadel foundation paints are really great for just blocking color in. Uh, I think I've referred to it as like the kills of miniature paint if you're familiar with like wall primer or whatever but essentially this stuff's really thickly pigmented and with this model in particular I've done my whole like top-down uh, zenithal highlighting for metals and uh, all of the colors like the the color that existed on this guy before I started going at it it's all super reflective and super dark so I'm looking to get even, I'm probably looking at two coats of this uh, Averland Sunset color, and that should block out uh, all of that uh, color that would peel through and the reflectiveness that you're going to see as we get more towards the back of this model once I flip it around. So you can see there the parts where it's kind of like greenish yellow, it still hasn't quite taken. So here we are after two coats maybe a third one. I'm pretty sure it's just two though. And you can't really see much of anything in terms of the reflective qualities of the metal that were there. And uh, this is just, it speaks volumes to the, uh, the covering power of the Citadel foundation paints. So to highlight, now I'm coming in with just straight Averland Sunset. And I'm just hitting the parts of the cloak that kind of peak or billow out. Uh, I love painting cloth because it's got such legit movement to it. And uh, you can really make the miniature come alive with, uh, with highlighting these, uh, these peaks real well. So uh, just use uh, the tip of your brush to get some of these folds of the cloth. Uh, they're a little tight, but usually if you can get the big folds you don't have to worry about all the little ones that are in between there and when I am highlighting a model like this I like to pull my paint or put like the direction of my brush is pulling towards the uh, the point where the highlights gonna be strongest so that uh, when I put my brush on the model it deposits a little bit of paint and then my brush drags it out a little bit so you can see while I'm doing the cloak here, this is one of the reasons why I've flipped him over, is because I'm putting the brush on the point where it's darkest and then pulling that paint so it deposits where the highlight's going to be standing out the most. So I think at this point I realize that the yellows on this, the transition between the base coat and what I'm highlighting with are so stark that this guy is wondering why Coolman or Not's nerfing his dire wolves. So I've decided to come in with a mix of my original base coat plus just a little bit of Averland Sunset so that I can try and cover up this uh, really bombastic like not smooth transition yellow that I put down and uh, what I really want to do here is I want to highlight the cloak 
in a quick way, but I don't want it to be so quick that it looks like I just slopped on the next coat of yellow without really thinking about how that's going to transition between the base coat and the first highlight that I'm doing, or the, the mid-tone, if you will. So we're just going to trace around the model and go over those parts that I had already done with that pure Averlin sunset because it's just sticking out like a sore thumb, as though yellow doesn't already do that. We don't want it to do it any more than it already has to. You'll have to forgive a lot of the focus issues. As I said at the beginning of this video, I'm kind of experimenting with a new camera, so it's just a learning process. And as I said, I figured that it was, since I have the video finished, I might as well throw it out there so people can at least get the colors and maybe the basic understanding the techniques. So with the shield here, I've decided to do not exactly what I'm doing with the rest of the model. Uh, this is what I like to call wet blending, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people wouldn't call it this, where I like to use the model as a palette almost. So I'll put my dark color and the color that I'm working with on there and kind of mix them together while they're still wet to create a transition between those two areas. So now that I've given the... Uh, the mix of the base coat and the highlight a little bit of time to settle. I'm coming back in with that straight Averlin sunset and you can already see just after the first few strokes that we're still getting that brightness, that, that nice bright yellow, but it's not so bam, you know, because we kept, a, we kept the base coat pretty dark in terms of what Averlin sunset would normally look like. So now we're able to negotiate that transition or help it along a little bit better because we have this like mix between the two tones and really all I'm doing here is kind of like sloppy layering I'm not trying to blend these colors or do my weird little use the model as the palette thing I'm not sure what it would be called I think a lot of people use the term wet blending as like putting a color down and then using like spit or water to like slop it around to kind of thin it out so it's more like a glaze on the model so here I've kind of learned my lesson from the uh, straight Averlin sunset issue. And this yellow is quite bright because it's a mix of games or Citadel uh, Uriel yellow and Averlin sunset. So you can see I'm doing more of that mixing on the flat surface to try and create that transition. And it's not going super well here because the the transition a little too stark again. So I'm just going to come in and try and edit that and fix it a little bit uh, just to try and make the yellow on the shield a little bit more smooth. At least on the cloak it's easy because your highlights are very apparent whereas on the shield it's that one flat surface so if you have any problems with uh, your highlights not blending very well it really stands out. But now I think I've got it down and I'm pretty happy with where the shield's sitting at for now. So now we're coming in with just straight Uriel yellow and uh, just highlighting, or no, this could still be the mix. Uh, I think on that previous cloak part there was a issue that I had with maybe overworking the area, so I was going to cover it up. But now I've got straight Uriel yellow coming through, and you can see this is quite a bit brighter than anything else we've got, but it's still, since we've mixed Uriel yellow with Averlin Sunset, we're not getting that weird uh, separation between the two colors. The transitions are going uh, pretty nicely. Like there's, you can see the separation, but it's not so apparent. It's a little bit more smooth. Your eye kind of like gets guided to see the transition a little bit better. And when you have these uh, on your table and you're playing your game, people aren't going to be able to see the lines of separation from your like sloppy layering. Uh, for those who don't know, like probably the more true or like not sloppy layering would be to really water these paints down more so than I am. I'm using about a one-to-one -one mix. I keep my paint pretty thick when I work it, especially when I'm trying to do the uh, blending on the model uh, because the, the less I water it down, it seems like the easier it is to work it and kind of spread it around. Um, but your typical layering would keep these things pretty thin and uh, you would just be tinting the 
the colors as you go along instead of um, or you'd be building them up slowly and tinting them kind of like painting with a wash or a glaze or something like that but we're just coming back in with that Uriel yellow to reestablish those highlights because yellow is uh, very transparent when you put it on like the pigmentation isn't super duper strong in your yellows and uh, just co going back a couple times to get some more highlights kind of uh, put down you can start you can you'll start to see the uh, the colors kind of come across more true so again this is just Uriel yellow I'm gonna put a little bit in the corner of the shield here but I'm pretty sure I mess this one up a little bit and then I do this is where I'm doing some of your more traditional like wet blending I guess where I just use a little bit of water to spread out the uh, the yellow so now I've decided to come in and I didn't want to keep the uh, uh, the layers the way that I had them so now I'm kind of just going back and doing what I want to do with the rest of the army you can see I've got my little paper towel here it's pretty wet and I am putting down the two colors so that dark Averland sunset plus the ink and then I'm going in with Averland sunset and the different yellows and I'm working real fast here this isn't just the video being sped up this doesn't take very long to do but I'm putting the colors on very quick and then I'm just kind of swishing them together to kind of get the transitions to work. So uh, at the end of this video, I've got some stills so you can see those better. I have to apologize for me painting off the camera here again. New camera, new setup, new everything. So uh, it's a learning process for me on this one. And uh, I aim to get better, of course, because I want people to get a lot of use out of these or at least try and learn something from them. And if I'm painting off screen and out of focus, then nobody's really getting anything out of it other than my fantastic color commentary. But now we're just, I, maybe you can see it a little bit here. I'm just doing that kind of mash blending on the, on the cloak that kind of frills out underneath his hammer there. Uh, when I do paint miniatures this way, the my highlights are not extremely subtle I try to get a little bit more exaggerated with them uh, you could even step this up a little bit by introducing some white to that Uriel yellow and just pulling it up a little bit more to make it stand out like crazy like there's no subtlety with yellow for me I like to get it pretty loaded so here's how the stills turned out you can see this cloak is post uh, my wet blending version so the color transitions are pretty smooth and you can see the shadows a bit the contrast could be a little bit more in terms of how dark it is but I think this image shows pretty well that the shadows are pretty they're they're established but they could be established a little better and then the shield here looking buttery smooth in terms of how the highlights go again the yellow is a little bit on the timid side but this will get you started with your uh, Baratheons or Mountainsmen or whatever else you want to paint yellow. I hope you found this tutorial useful even if the video got a little dodgy from time to time. If you're new to the channel, stop by our Facebook page Big Top Gaming or check out our podcast A Game of Ice and Fire that's solely devoted to a Song of Ice and Fire miniature war game by Cool Mini or Not. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.